Hi guys, it's Danielle with the Woodland Market and Studio. Today I thought I would come on here and show you how to paint one of our little houses that we just put up on our website. Um, we thought that maybe this would be a project that um, would not only keep you crafty, but remind you that being at home is the safest place to be right now and also the most comfortable. So um, I'm gonna turn the camera down, I'm gonna show you my supplies and we'll get started. Okay, so my supplies are really simple. I have one of our houses with a stencil. I have a jar with some water. I have an old gift card um, for scooching it down. I have one paintbrush, a little cup for my base coat paint, my reading glasses, <laughs> and a couple paints to use um, for the lettering and the little heart. I'm changing it up a little. I'm gonna do it gray, because my house is gray. Um, I may change this to a red. I haven't decided. But we'll get started by painting the base of our board. This is a blue-gray uh, paint. It is actually a flat house paint. And if you have um, house paint, um, as long as it's a flat or a satin finish, it would probably work. So if you wanted to match. Um, your home, you could use that. Um, although sometimes the stencil doesn't stick as well to a paint that is a flat or a matte finish acrylic. That is the best paint you can buy and it is available at Walmart for 50 cents. So it's very cheap um, and as long as it says matte on there, you're good. So what I'm gonna do is just really quickly base coat my board. Not very exciting, but I hope um, you'll let me know some of the things that you are doing right now to be crafty during this um, time of the coronavirus where everyone is supposed to be staying at home. I've been um, mostly just uh you know chilling watching tv youtube videos watching other people craft but um every time i come into the shop i try to paint something create something so that i am staying active in the whole craft um, area it is what i love to do so it's something that i focus on um i know i have a lot of crocheters and um crafters on here. Let me know what you are crafting right now. So I painted um, the two so or three sides and I didn't paint the back yet because I don't want to get my hands all painted. Um, I'm trying gently to paint the bottom. Probably should have started with the bottom. It doesn't really need to be painted thoroughly, but I do like to finish all sides. So Oops. <laughs> so that it looks professional. All right, so fingerprints and all. Kind of a messy paint or so. That's pretty normal for me to be covered in paint. So I'm just going to let that dry. And the paint needs to be completely dry before you put your stencil on. So give yourself something to do. Go have a snack, check your emails. Um, do something, let this dry completely, and then we'll come back to it, okay? Okay, friends, I am back. I let this dry um, completely. I made myself a cup of coffee, so I am ready to go. Um, it's completely dry. I even took the time and painted the back. So what I pick the side that you like the way it looks the most and take your little bit of sandpaper that comes with your sign and give it a good sanding. I really like to go on the edges and get the edges roughed up a little bit to make it look distressed. Bring some of that wood grain back through. If you wanted to make it pretty um, distressed and have different colors show through, you could do a base coat of gray and the, or black and then put white on top of it and sand it um, to have it the bottom color come through. On this, I'm just um, making the, the wood grain come through. 
Um, you don't have to do that. I just kind of like the way it looks. And then what you want to do, so your stencil stick is with the grain of the wood, which is top to bottom, you want it to just stand up smooth so that um, the stencil will stick, because when you paint it, it raises the grain of the wood, makes it nice and bumpy, and so the stencil doesn't lay flat. So I'm going to wipe it off with a rag. Um, I usually use paper towels in class, but since we're conserving paper products right now, I have a lint-free cloth. You can use really any washcloth rag that you're willing to get a little paint on or dust on. That's um, also what I'm gonna do with my brush. I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna dry it really well so that I can move on to the other paint colors. And you just want it really dry in between colors so that the paint doesn't run underneath your stencil. The, if it's super runny, wet paint, it will get under that stencil and it won't be a crisp, um, smooth stencil. So to, to remove the back, oops, hang on. For your stencil, there is um, there are three layers. The top layer is the transfer tape. The middle blue layer is the um, stencil itself. And then the back layer, the one with all the grid lines on it, is the part that you want to remove first. So what I do is find a corner and try to fold it over and then pull back, lay, lay it upside down and gently pull back on the back nice and slow. Now if any of the blue comes up onto here, you lay it back down and you can rub it down with your credit card or um, gift card. So just nice and slow. These are really simple stencils, so they should come off really easy. Save this little back because I'm gonna use it as my paint palette. And then just turn your little stencil over and uh, position it how you like it. It should have one straight line on the left side to um, guide you by, but mine doesn't look super straight. So I'm gonna play with it a little bit to make sure it looks straight. If you don't rub it down, you can reposition it. Just make sure when you are repositioning it that um, everything is still intact. So I have it where I like it. Then I'm just gonna take my gift card here and I'm just gonna give it a really good rub down over the whole stencil, especially the parts like in the O that um, could potentially come up when you peel the transfer tape off. So, okay, so I'm gonna take a corner of it, of the transfer tape now. We're taking off the clear tape on the very top and we're only bringing up that clear tape. We're gonna leave that blue sticking to our board. So just really slowly slide this back. And if any pieces, don't just yank it off, it will <laughs> destroy it. If any of the pieces um, come up, if any of that blue is on this white transfer tape, lay it back down and just rub it down some more. Just give it a lot of good pressure. Again, these are really small, so you shouldn't have a lot of trouble with that. You can discard the transfer tape. Excuse me, need lots of coffee these days. Um, we are not gonna use Mod Podge on this. This is a very small stencil and as long as you apply very thin coats of paint, you won't have any trouble. I'm gonna use Pavement by Apple Barrel. This is uh, all the paint that is available at Walmart. It is 50 cents. Um, it is matte finish. Do not get the multi-surface. Don't get the semi-gloss, the gloss, the glitter, <laughs> the metallics. Uh, you can you can kind of get away with the metallics, but if you're concerned that it's not going to work, get the flat or matte finish paint. So that is way too much paint. You do not need that much paint. It's just what came out. So I will probably open up the jar. We'll just do that right now and take most of that back in. This is a really, really dark gray and it is going to coat very quickly. So with the same paintbrush, you only need one. You just get a thin amount of paint on there. And I'm just gonna do the, let, the word home. And I'm just gonna go up and down until I cannot 
read it any longer and make sh and cover that stencil completely. Just smooth, thin strokes. You do not need to pile it on. It can be very, very thin. I always tell um, people in class that it's like nail polish. That first coat of paint nail polish is not gonna show up. It's gonna be really thin, almost transparent. The second coat is what it sticks to. That's what it sticks to. So there we have it. You can't read it. Um, it is very thin and honestly, that's the only coat of paint that's gonna need. So I'm gonna rinse my brush. Now the red, on the other hand, is not going to show up the first time. It'll show up, but it will not be as solid. It's a transparent paint. It takes a couple coats. So we're going to do that. I'm using a Craft Smart acrylic paint. Um, this is from Michaels. It just says acrylic paint. As long as, it, if it says just acrylic paint, that's fine too. It doesn't have to say matte. As long as it says acrylic not acrylic satin or acrylic multi-surface, just acrylic <laughs> or matte finish. It's crazy, but the paint does matter. If it's a if it's a glossy paint, it sticks to that stencil. And when you go to pull that stencil up, it goes right along with it. It just glues itself to the stencil. So my brush is really dry, and I like to feel it and make sure it's pretty dry, no water. And then I'm just gonna do my little heart. Oh, not bad coverage, not bad. I could have used even less paint, honestly. So there we have it, painting my little heart. Now we're gonna let these dry completely. And I might come back through and put one more coat on the little red heart but the word home is perfect. So we're gonna let this dry. I'm gonna drink my cup of coffee and I'll get back with you. Okay, I just realized that I wasn't filming. I did put another coat of paint on the little heart and then I um, let it dry completely. And what I want you to do with your, your um, I already peeled the stencil when I wasn't filming, so I laid it back down to show you. What I want you to do is turn your little house sideways. You do not want to pull it from top to bottom. You want to pull it from side to side so that it doesn't cause any slivers. So we're just going to go from one side and we're just going to peel that whole thing off nice and slowly and carefully and it should come off in one piece. And this is, since I reapplied it, came off really easy, way easier than it normally does. And then the only thing left in your stencil is the O in the heart in the home so you can use a straight pin you could use tweezers or you could just use your fingernail I just got my fingernail under there and popped it right out so you don't need any special tools for this one it's a really easy one so here's one example of our little home sign I just love the colors this one's going home with me um, here are some other samples of homes that I have made with different things. You don't have to, um, you know, use the stencil or you could use the stencil on the back of this and put, you know, home on the back. And this is a little um, pipe cleaner that looks like an evergreen that I twisted into a wreath and added a bow and just hot glued it on there. And I just love this. Um, I painted it white and I used a little bit of stain to distress it. I do have a video on this and I will be posting it soon and it is available. If you want the little wreath, put it in the add-on in the paint section on our website. I don't have this ribbon, however, so you'll have to find a little bit of ribbon at home. Uh, this one, I rated my scrapbooking collection, which I have a huge scrapbooking stash. This is scrapbooking paper that I Mod Podge down and added a little twine and this is a scrapbooking embellishment. Um, I do have a video on this so I'll be posting that too. Here is the word love. Here's a little home. This, These two I painted gray underneath and sanded them so that gray comes through um, so they look a little more rustic. You can add 
pretty much any four letter word, well, <laughs> the word faith also fits on there. So smaller words, um, just let me know what you want your little house to say. Right in the section on the website, it says, what would you like your stencil to be or say, um, and you just pick, write the word home, love, faith, hope, anything you would like and that will be included and you could also put this on the back of here i think that would be adorable and then have a two-sided um little house here is another one completely different coloring and uh, this is a scrapbook embellishment again this was just scrapbook paper that i glued down onto the onto the little house that i painted purple so lots of options so lots of fun options with these, lots of ways to get creative with it. Um, raid that scrapbooking stash, I know you have one. <laughs> and if not, there's scrapbook paper at Walmart, um, really inexpensive, just you know, buy it by the sheet or buy a little booklet of it. Super cute stuff out there. I believe this paper came from Walmart in a little four by four or six by six size book. So just get creative with it. And I hope that you enjoy this video and I hope that you will um, show me your creations if you buy one of our little house kits and stay safe my friends stay healthy and stay home <laughs> at least for a little while take care